Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 1274. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about the biggest weekly stock buybacks in history. As you know, stock buybacks are when corporations buy their own stock back, and they usually do that when they think they're at bargain basement prices. Now, they usually have to get approval to do that and allocate specific money to do that. But the fact that many corporations are seeing that their stocks are at good prices and they feel it's a good time to buy is telling us that valuations are looking pretty good in the market. It also tells us that maybe they're feeling a little bit more confident that the market bottom is in as it has been in from a year ago in October. So they might be realizing finally that the low is behind us and we're not going to new lows. In fact, we're getting close to reaching all time highs. In the last three weeks, the S&P 500 has rallied 10%, which is an enormous move in just a three week period. But back on October 11th, I gave a buy signal and said we were going to have a torrid rally into the end of the year. I still believe we have more to come, and this is just one of the signs that it's in process. And that is a flurry of stock buybacks, about $5 billion worth per day, has been happening in the fourth quarter. In fact, Goldman Sachs's trading desk said that over the last 10 days, CTAs have bought nearly $70 billion worth of U.S. equities. This is the largest 10-day buying we have on record. If you're not familiar with the term CTA, it means Commodity Trading Advisor. These are professional managers who are similar to portfolio managers in mutual funds who seek to profit from movements in the markets, whether that be stocks, commodities, currencies, futures, options, And that includes hedge funds, which, as I've talked about on the podcast, can go long buying stocks that they're investing in directly or short, which is borrowing a stock to sell it and buying it back at a lower price to make a profit. The fact that Goldman Sachs says this is the largest 10-day buying spree that they have on record is significant. And $70 billion of U.S. equities is an enormous amount of buying. Now, this may lead some people to think, well, is it all over? I'm going to say, no, it's not all over. We still have more upside to come. And I'm expecting a pretty big rally between now and year end. And the reason for that is there's still plenty of short positions that hedge funds need to buy stocks to cover. That's going to force more buying. Secondly, corporations are doing stock buybacks. I don't think every corporation who wants to do a stock buyback has done it yet. So more corporations will probably authorize stock buybacks. And thirdly, I've been talking about the year-end window dressing. Now, if this were any other time of the year, I might expect that profits would be taken and the rally may be toward the end. But the fact that this is happening right before the end of the year means that we're more likely to have window dressing, which is professionals buying stocks to make their portfolio look good. So when the year end reports come out, it looks like they've had a brilliant portfolio and have owned all of the right stocks. So they'll go in and buy the Magnificent Seven, the Googles, the Nvidias, the Microsofts and Apples, etc., And they'll fill their portfolio with the Magnificent Seven. So anyone who looks at the portfolio at the end of the year will say, ah, oh, bravo, you've owned the Magnificent Seven. When in fact, they may not have owned the Magnificent Seven for the entire quarter or even the entire year. But it doesn't matter. At the end of the year, you report what your holdings are and people will see what your holdings are at the end of the year. Whether you held them before that or not, they don't know. They just see what you have at the end of the year. So because year-end window dressing is a factor, 
I think that will force more buying than usual and probably more buying in the Magnificent 7 in particular. Everybody's going to want to have those in their portfolio for the year-end report. So everything is still on track for my bullish market move into the end of the year, even though we've already seen significant progress and some of the biggest money flows in history. If you haven't yet subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified as soon as new podcasts are available. And all of my podcasts are on my website at lindapjones.com forward slash podcasts. And while you're there, sign up for my weekly newsletter for more wealth tips. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.